With the recent case of COVID-19 and a tiger at the Bronx Zoo, there is increasing concerns over whether our domesticated cats can get COVID-19. After evaluating the research as well as new information coming out around this subject, I can now more confidently say that I do not consider domesticated cats to be at an increased risk of COVID-19. And in this episode, I'm going to explain why. I'm Dr. Meggs, and this is Everyday Vet. So should we even worry about cats being able to get the virus? Well, first we have to understand how the viral infection occurs. In order for a virus to infect a cell, it has to bind to a receptor and be taken into the cell where it can then take over replication. So researchers led by Yuhan Wan recognized that we needed to understand what receptor the SARS-CoV-2 virus was able to bind to. And they recognized that the COVID-19 cases were looking very similar to the SARS cases of 2002. It was already known that the 2002 SARS virus was binding to the ACE2 receptors in humans. And they hypothesized that the COVID-19 virus, SARS-CoV-2, likely bound to the same receptor. So they were able to take the genetic sequence of the SARS-CoV-2 virus and look at how in a simulation it would bind to that ACE2 receptor. And they were able to demonstrate that the virus did appear to bind at that same receptor. So why are we talking about humans? How does this relate to our cats? Well, it turns out that the ACE2 receptor in humans is actually very similar to the ACE2 receptor in cats. So we can extrapolate then that theoretically the virus should be able to bind to that receptor in cats and potentially cause infection in them. Now that we've demonstrated theoretical potential for infection, we have to look at if there are any real world cases. And for a real world case, we would expect three things. One, exposure to the virus. Two, development of symptoms associated with the viral infection. And three, isolation of the virus in the appropriate tissue samples. And in March, there was an interesting case in Belgium. An owner of a cat became positive with COVID-19. The cat later then became sick. It was showing respiratory issues as well as vomiting and diarrhea. Both of these things are very common in cats and actually one of the most common reasons I would see cats in a clinical setting would be for respiratory issues. And there are a lot of potential causes. So we normally wouldn't think to test for COVID-19 except that we've already demonstrated that it's theoretically possible. So because we know it's theoretically possible, it made sense to test this cat just in case it did have COVID-19. So samples were taken from the vomit as well as the diarrhea, and they were able to isolate the virus. But this poses a little bit of a problem. The virus infects an individual by binding to that ACE2 receptor in the respiratory tract. So in order to prove infection, we would expect to find the virus in the respiratory system. Whereas if it's in the fecal material or the vomit, we can't actually demonstrate that that caused an actual infection in the respiratory tract. And the reason why I say this is because we have a similar incidence of this occurring in terms of the Imeria parasite. So Imeria is parasitic to birds, but not to cats. If a cat goes outside and eats bird poop, oftentimes it will ingest the egg, the egg will pass through the intestinal tract without causing any infection and be shed in the fecal sample. So when we test a fecal sample on the cat, it will come up positive for Imeria, even though the cat was never actually infected with Imeria. And if this can occur with the parasitic egg, then it stands to reason that the same thing could potentially have happened with the virus. We already know that the human was sick and shedding the virus. And if that same human was feeding the cat, the virus may have been on the food, ingested, and then passed through the cat without actually causing the infection. So in order to demonstrate cause and effect infection with the virus, we need to find it in the respiratory system. But now what's interesting is that in April with Nadia, a tiger at the Bronx Zoo, we do have for the first time a definitive case of COVID-19 in felines. So I told you that it was theoretically possible for a cat to get infected with SARS-CoV-2. And then I told you that a tiger definitively did get infected with SARS-CoV-2. And yet I'm not worried about your cat. Well, why? Well, there are only two ways in which Nadia the tiger could have been infected. One, it's the same virus, or two, it's a different virus because it's a mutation. Well, let's consider for a second that it's a mutation. If it was a mutation, I would not be able to confidently say that I'm not worried because we would need to revisit everything that we've already talked about. We would have to relook at how the virus binds to the receptor, susceptibility. We would have to essentially look at this virus as a whole new virus. 
But luckily, per Dr. Wang at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, the genetic sequence of the virus isolated from Nadia was a 99% match to the strain going around the human population. And what this scientifically means is that it's essentially the same virus. So we do not appear to be dealing with a different virus. It's the same one. So now I've told you that it's theoretically possible. Here's a case in a tiger. Oh, by the way, it's the same virus. So why am I saying this is good news? Well, I'm saying it's good news for two things. One, we know what we're dealing with. This is the SARS-CoV-2 virus and everything we've talked about so far still holds true. And two, there is one major factor that we have to consider and that's correlation. So we've seen the virus spread around the globe in the human population. There are millions of household cats so we would have had an extensive number of cases of cats being exposed to this virus, but we've only seen a handful of potential cases and only one definitive case. So why is that? Why aren't we seeing these cases in our cats? Well, there's two possibilities. One, felines in general are not easy to infect. And for whatever reason, the situation at the Bronx Zoo just happened to be perfect enough that Nadia was able to get sick. Well, if that's the case, it's highly unlikely for them to get infected. So there's really not much concern for your cat to be infected. The other possibility is that cats are different enough from lions and tigers that they aren't even susceptible to the virus in the same way. Well, if that's the case, then we really don't have to worry about your cat because they're not actually susceptible. And just to recap, I'm not concerned of your cats being at an increased risk of COVID-19 nor do I see any evidence to suggest that they could give you COVID-19. There are some general safety practices that I do recommend regardless, as there are other things that can pass between you and your cat. So in general, I recommend avoiding face-to-face -face contact, don't share food, and make sure to wash your hands before and after interacting with your cat. If you would prefer to be extra cautious, by all means, keep your cat indoors during these times. But just to be clear, this would be an action taken out of an abundance of caution, rather than a recommendation I'm making based on these results. This is an ever evolving situation and I'll be continuing to closely monitor it. If there are any changes that affect your pets, I'll make sure to make a new updated video as soon as possible. If you would like to be notified when the next video comes out, make sure to turn on the bell icon. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Megs and this is Everyday Vet.